In your Arduino project, you'll be using sensors, and those sensor measurements probably have noise. In this video, I'll show you how to design and implement a low-pass filter that's just right for your project. It's easier to use an artificial signal to test the filter, so we'll start by creating one. I'll represent the fundamental component of the signal with a 2 Hz sine wave. To represent the unwanted noise, I'll add a 50 Hz sine wave. The discrete Fourier transform, or DFT, offers another way to look at the signal. Each sine curve shows up as a peak in the Fourier domain. Here I've isolated the 2 Hz signal. And here's the 50 Hz signal. The peaks are mirrored at negative frequencies because I'm using the two-sided discrete Fourier transform. Now we'll create a low-pass filter that preserves the 2 Hz component and eliminates the 50 Hz noise. A first-order low-pass filter is typically represented by the transfer function omega 0 divided by s plus omega 0. If you're not very familiar with transfer functions, don't worry. Later in this video, I'll show you how to convert the transfer function into update equations. You'll be able to use those equations to implement the low-pass filter on an Arduino. The transfer function has one parameter, the cutoff frequency omega 0. I'll set the cutoff frequency to 2 pi times 5 radians per second. This produces a cutoff frequency of 5 hertz, which should preserve the 2 hertz signal and attenuate the 50 hertz signal. Let's see if it works. When I pass the 2 hertz signal through the filter, it is largely unaffected. However, when the 50 hertz signal is filtered, its magnitude is substantially reduced. You can understand how the filter affects other frequencies by looking at the Bode plot. The first graph in the Bode plot shows the magnitude of signals that have passed through the filter as a function of their frequency in radians per second. At an input frequency of 1 Hz, the signal is largely unaffected by the filter. At the filter's cutoff frequency of 5 Hz, the Bode plot shows 5 decibels. In this case, the signal is attenuated to 50% of its original magnitude. At 50 Hz, only 10% of the signal remains. At 500 Hz, the Bode plot magnitude is minus 40 decibels, so only 1% of the signal remains. The second half of the Bode plot shows the phase as a function of the filter frequency. This part of the Bode plot is useful for demonstrating how much delay is caused by the filter. At 1 Hz, there's very little delay in the signal. At 5 Hz, the phase of the filtered signal is minus 45 degrees, implying that the output will be delayed by 1 8th of 0.2 seconds, or about 25 milliseconds. At higher frequencies, the phase delay increases up to about 90 degrees. Listen, I know what you're thinking. Get to the Arduino implementation already. Unfortunately, the transfer function form of the filter is not suitable for real-time signal processing on the Arduino. To get a usable form of the filter, we're going to have to do some ugly math. But don't worry, I've already coded all of the math for you in a Python script, so even if you don't understand it perfectly, you can still use it to create your filter. Up to this point, we've represented the filter as a continuous transfer function. Digital implementations of filters run in discrete time, so first we'll solve for the discrete form of the transfer function. Real-time filtering happens in the time domain, so we'll also solve for the constant coefficient difference equation. In the Python code, I've started by loading the required libraries and defining the continuous transfer function with a cutoff frequency of 5 Hz. The discrete form of the transfer function depends on the sample frequency of the signal you want to filter. The Arduino clock frequency is several megahertz, but the actual loop frequency depends on how much code is running. To simplify things, I'll throttle the Arduino loop so that the test signal is sampled at a frequency of 1 kilohertz. To obtain the discrete transfer function at the sampling frequency, you can use the bilinear transform. To do so, substitute the transform into the continuous transfer function. Alternatively, you can use software, like the Python code shown here, to do the work for you. The last thing we need to do is construct the difference equation. It turns out that the coefficients of the difference equation are almost exactly the coefficients of the discrete transfer function. 
you just need to include a negative sign for the denominator's coefficients. The difference equation depends on the filtered signal y and the raw signal x. To test the filter on the Arduino, we'll start by coding the test signal we defined at the beginning of this video. Next, we'll implement the difference equation for the filter. The new value of the filtered signal yn is equal to a weighted sum of the previous value of the filtered signal yn1 and the current and previous values of the raw signal xn and xn1. To complete the code, store the values of the raw and filtered signals so that they can be used in the next iteration of the loop function. There's also a 1 millisecond delay so that the loop function updates at a frequency of 1 kHz. Here's the result. The filter has largely removed the high frequency component from the test signal. However, the magnitude is slightly attenuated and there's a short delay. Let's look at the result in the frequency domain. You can see that the 2 Hz signal is preserved while the 50 Hz signal is almost entirely removed. Here's a question. Will this filter work to allow frequencies from 0 to 20 Hz while removing higher frequencies? To answer this question, I'm adjusting the main frequency of the test signal. As we increase the frequency beyond the cutoff of 5 Hz, the main component becomes attenuated. So if you need to preserve higher frequencies, this filter simply won't work for you. So what can you do to make a filter that will work? The answer is to make a new filter with a higher cutoff frequency. I've created a Python script that incorporates all of the elements used in this video to design and test a low-pass filter. It's linked in the description below. I'll change the cutoff frequency in the script to 30 Hz, so that signals from 0 to 20 Hz will be preserved. Next, I'll adjust the main component of my test signal to 20 Hz. Running the script will create the filter transfer function and perform the necessary computations for generating the difference equation. In the first part of the script, you can see the test signal and its power spectrum. The next part generates the continuous transfer function of the filter and shows its Bode diagram. At the bottom of the script, you can find the filter coefficients. The script did generate a filter with a cutoff frequency of 30 Hz, but as you can see, it really didn't work. That's because the low-pass filter has a broad transition band, meaning that there is a band of frequencies near the cutoff where signals are neither kept nor stopped, but are just kind of attenuated. We can understand this issue better by looking at the Bode plot for the first-order low-pass filter. The pass band is a set of frequencies where the filter preserves the signal. For the filter with a cutoff frequency of 5 Hz shown here, that's between about 0 and 2 Hz. The stop band is a set of frequencies where most of the content is removed. For this filter, that's from about 30 Hz on. Between 2 and 30 Hz, the filter doesn't do very well. It will attenuate signals, but it won't actually remove them. This is the transition band. In a perfect world, we'd want a low-pass filter to perfectly pass all signals below the cutoff frequency and eliminate any signals with frequencies above 5 Hz. No transition band. Of course, we live in the real world, but we can create a filter with a smaller transition band. There are many different types of higher-order filters. Here I'll show you the Butterworth low-pass filter. A second-order Butterworth low-pass filter has a similar response to the first-order low-pass filter, but offers greater attenuation. The result is a smaller transition band. Increase to a fourth-order Butterworth filter, and the transition band shrinks further. Jack up the order to 50, and the magnitude response of the filter is very close to the perfect low-pass filter. Seeing this graph, you might think, why don't we always use a thousandth order Butterworth, and then we'll get a perfect cutoff? Of course, there's no free lunch in life or signal processing, but we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's see how to implement the Butterworth filter on the Arduino. The Butterworth filter has a similar transfer function to the first order low-pass filter. The difference is that the denominator is a polynomial of order n. You don't have to derive the Butterworth filter to use it. You can use the formula that has been around since 1930, when Stephen Butterworth came up with it. The coefficients of the Butterworth polynomial are given by the recursion formula shown here. The first coefficient, a0, is set to 1. It's easy to write code to compute the transfer function of a Butterworth filter of any order. 
Here I compute the coefficients a in Python using a for loop. Then I adjust the coefficients based on the cutoff frequency and use the scipy library to define the continuous transfer function. Once you have the continuous transfer function, you can use the same code we used for the first order low pass filter to compute the discrete transfer function using your sampling frequency. Then, you can extract the coefficients of the difference equation so that you can implement the filter on the Arduino. The resulting difference equation depends on more historical values than the first order filter. This second order Butterworth filter depends on the two previous values. Higher order filters will have even more terms. Before implementing the Butterworth filter, let's review the output of the first order low pass filter. Here I'm adjusting the test signal to have 2 Hz and 25 Hz components. After filtering, the 2 Hz component is retained, but some of the 25 Hz component also remains. Now let's compare that to the second order Butterworth filter. I've updated the code to use the difference equation we just derived. The second order Butterworth filter shows better filtering, more attenuation of the high frequency component, and better preservation of the low frequency component. This comes at a cost. There's more delay in the filtered signal. Earlier, when we looked at the Bode plot for the Butterworth filters, we only looked at the magnitude plot. That's only half the story. The other half of the story is told in the phase plot. For the first order low pass filter, there's relatively little delay, even at high frequencies. For a second order Butterworth filter, there's more delay, but in the pass band it's fairly similar to the first order filter. A fourth order filter has a larger delay, as much as 45 degrees inside the pass band. That means your filtered signal will lag by about an eighth of the period in the pass band. Increase to a 50th order filter and there's a massive increase in the delay. The signal can be delayed by a whole period or more inside the pass band. So when you design your low pass filter, you need to balance two things. The attenuation characteristics shown in the first graph of the Bode plot, and the delay caused by the filter, illustrated in the second graph of the Bode plot. Butterworth filters aren't the only option for a high order filter, so if the characteristics of these filters aren't suitable for your project, try looking into some of the other standard filters. Here's a comparison of the first and second order low pass filters applied to filter raw accelerometer readings from an MPU 6050. Both filters work to remove the high frequency components of the signal. There's delay in each, but it's more pronounced in the second order filter. However, the second order filter result is smoother. Which filter would you use in your application? Let me know in the comments below.